If you're trying to build a desktop application in C++, finding a good GUI framework to use can be tricky. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are so many different options out there. You could use something like Qt or WX widgets. I mean, they seem to be popular, they're cross-platform. What's the problem? The problem is, I hate them. I mean, does anybody actually have a good experience using like Qt or WX widgets to build a C++ application? Not to mention the complex licensing model that goes behind some of these that might cost you quite a bit of money. So what do you do? What do you do if you just quickly want to make an app in C++? Why is everything so difficult? Well, before we answer that question, let's step back a little bit. Why are you using C++ to build an application? Because if you're not, there are so many things you could use. I mean, if it's just something simple, then maybe you could consider writing a web app that runs in like a web browser. That'd be easily cross-platform out of the box, including mobile devices and really anything with a good web browser. And if you wanted to be more desktop focused with that kind of ease of web development situation, then why don't you just use something like JavaScript and Electron? I hear it's great. For the more serious applications, you could use something like C Sharp and WPF. I mean, yes, you'll be restricted to Windows only, but maybe that's okay. I could go on. The point is there are many different ways to build applications. You don't have to use C++, and in fact, I would say C++ is kind of an unusual choice, unless, you're like me. If you're building a performance intensive application or something that's low level or something that really highly revolves around a library maybe that's written in C++ and using wrappers or whatever is just a, a pain and you want to just write an application in C++ instead, you know, for those use cases, it really does make a lot of sense to just write your actual kind of application GUI part of everything in C++. So as an example, for those of you watching this channel, you know that I build game engines. A game engine, what is a game engine? A game engine is basically like this C++ core, or at least it is in most cases, that then has stuff built around it to facilitate the production of games, as an example. So since the core is in C++, and usually that core will adapt to whatever platform you want it to adapt to, so whether that be Windows, Mac, Linux, maybe mobile devices, maybe consoles, that core is very intrinsic to the application. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense to write any tools that might go along with the core that really rely on the core, such as an editor, which needs to actually have like a viewport that is the core running inside it, as well as adjacent tools. It makes a lot of sense to write that big tool, I'm talking about the editor, in C++. Now you don't have to. I worked at EA for almost five years, they have Frostbite, Frost Ed, the Frostbite editor is written in C Sharp WPF. It of course uses the Frostbite C++ core, but the actual tools are written in C Sharp. So even if you are writing a game engine, of course you don't have to write your tools in C++. However, as I mentioned, the downside with C Sharp WPF is that it's Windows only, which is okay for a company with proprietary technology such as EA, because their development teams can just use Windows. And in fact, in the games industry, most people do use Windows. I'm not talking about the indie developers with their cool MacBooks, I'm talking about like, AAA developers usually run on Windows. Now, Unity and Unreal are two very big engines, very popular engines that have the core written in C++, but then also the tools, or specifically the editor, is also written in C++. Unity has a bit of a C-sharp thing going on with a lot of plugins and all of that, but the core kind of rendering framework is still there in C++. And if you want to be cross-platform, and if you are a game engine that already has a lot of rendering going on, in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to write your editor in C++ and to also be using a GUI framework that uses like immediate mode rendering using your graphics API. The reason being that you are a game engine, like you are rendering things in real time, you're doing graphics intensive work. It's totally okay for you to use that same tech for your application UI. Anyway, game engines aside, what if I just wanna build an application in C++? Why is this so difficult? What is the easiest way for me to get up and running? That is what I'm here for today. I just wanna show you guys what I do when I want to build an application in C++, how it's incredibly simple and way easier than anything else I've tried. And out of the box, it's not only cross-platform, including like mobile devices and consoles, but it can also adapt to any rendering API you might be using. DirectX 9, 10, 11, 12, OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, and you only have to write your code once. And it's completely free and open source. Doesn't this sound too good to be true? I am of course talking about I am GUI, or Dear I am GUI, which is an absolutely wonderful immediate mode GUI library. But wait, isn't I am GUI some kind of like toy, you know, debug UI thing for like testing out applications, just something like really simple that can't be used to build big applications? No, it's not. 
It's amazing and it can do pretty much anything. Now I will put a little disclaimer here just because, and that is like, I don't want this to turn into like a retained mode versus immediate mode versus hybrid kind of UIs and like what, what the best thing to, to use is. I firmly believe immediate mode UIs are just superior, but I also acknowledge that it does depend on what you're doing. My specialty is in game engines. Game engines, as I mentioned, are very much real-time rendering dynamic machines. So for what I do, I think it's totally okay. If you are trying to be extremely efficient on some kind of low spec embedded device or something, like yes, maybe you don't need to render the UI every frame and be all responsive and stuff. But I would argue that right now in 2022, for most cases, immediate mode UIs are just better. But isn't I am GUI like really limited and you can't style it very well and it just doesn't look good? No. Where, where do you know? Because you're literally rendering everything as if it was a video game. Like you can do literally anything. This is what Hazel's editor looks like. This UI is completely written in I am GUI. Yes, we did have to modify some parts of I am GUI to actually make this happen, but we are still using I am GUI and it is still great. To be honest, the only area where I start to see problems with I'm GUI are like, if you have absolutely huge data sets, if they're all being kind of rendered, refreshed every frame, you might run into some problems, but there are always strategies to mitigate that. You can just use caching in some form. However, in our experience in Hazel, like for example, if we have like hundreds of thousands of objects in the scene or something, the bottleneck has always been our code. So for example, like we need to show details in a tree view and to get those details, we have to hit like the asset manager and other engine systems to retrieve those details. Those have usually been the bottlenecks, not the I am GUI rendering code. My point is it's very fast. Anyway, enough talking. This has been quite the lecture but I just wanted to explain to you guys what is going on. In a minute, we're gonna dive in and take a look at how to actually write an application in I'm GUI. But first I wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Hostinger. Hostinger is pretty much the best web hosting platform on the internet. If you need to host a website or if you need a server for something to do on the internet, Hostinger is your go-to. Maybe you don't need to use C++ to write your application. Maybe you can write it as a web app. How are you going to host that web app? using Hostinger. We use Hostinger to host hazelengine.com, which by the way, you can go to to find out more information about Hazel, the game engine that we're building. Setting up hazelengine.com was an incredibly simple process. Like you just press a few buttons, fill in some details such as like, you know, the name of your website, pick your operating system and it's pretty much ready to go. And that simplicity applies to if you just want like a shared hosting website deal or if you're using a VPS like we are. And not only is the actual like UI and dashboard and all of that beautiful and simple, Simple, they also have a ton of useful documentation that will help you get going or do something really specific. It's not only useful if this is your first website. I mean, I've set up a lot of websites in my day, but just coming in and finding out the specifics of this web host in like just a few words on their documentation is so refreshing. But I guess having such a nice, clean user interface and brilliant documentation, you probably have to pay a lot for that, right? No, hosting as prices are honestly insane. They're honestly the best value web host I have ever seen. Click the link in the description below to sign up. If you use the coupon code CHERNO, you'll get an even bigger discount and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Huge thank you as always to hosting out for sponsoring this video. So as I mentioned, let's dive in, take a look at how we can make a C++ application using I am GUI. This is the I am GUI GitHub repository. This is where it all begins. Now, the only thing I wanna point out here, apart from the fact that if this is your first time, you know, you should read the readme, all that stuff, maybe get to know the library. There are two main branches. There's a branch called master, there's a branch called docking. The rest are just like feature branches, but these two, as you can see, are kind of like the main, the main events. Now, docking, even though it's not the master branch, is a very mature usable branch that has been around for like years. Eventually, it will be merged into master. It's not merged into master at the moment though. And it has a lot of really, really useful functionality, such as a dock space so that you can dock windows like you would in many applications these days, as well as being able to drag windows outside of the viewport, as you'll see when I show this later in this video. So my advice is to use the docking branch. Now, in my opinion, this docking branch is really what makes I'm GUI actually useful in the real world for real applications. If, if it wasn't for that kind of being able to drag windows outside of the main window, and also, you know, doc, doc spaces, all that stuff. Uh, I probably wouldn't be making this video today recommending that you use I'm GUI for applications because without this, it would be a little bit weird. So let's obtain this. I have prepared a folder. Here it is called I'm GUI apps. 
Uh, if you just click on the little address bar, type in CMD to get to a command prompt, let's go ahead and clone I'm GUI and we will start from there. So let's go ahead and grab that URL. We'll go over here, git clone. I always do a recursive clone just in case there are sub modules that we need to obtain. I actually don't think I'm GUI has any, but we'll do a recursive clone anyway. We'll paste in the repository URL. You don't really need the dot git, it'll add it if it's not there. Uh, and then I'm going to check out specifically that docking branch straight away. So if you do a dash B, we won't bother checking out master and then we'll have to switch to docking. We can just check out docking. And then if you like, you can give it like a folder. So I'm going to call this my application. It's going to check out all of this code into a folder called my application, enter, and now it's going to clone I'm GUI. Okay, done. That didn't take much time. Let's go ahead and go to that folder. Here we are. Here's my application and we have all of our code here. Now, I'm GUI works pretty much anywhere because it has a lot of really good examples and you can see over here just how many examples it has. If you're just doing a speed run and you just want to get up and running with I'm GUI, then just open the I'm GUI example solution, pick literally almost whatever you like. So for Windows, I recommend either Falcon or like DirectX 11 or 12, but this isn't exactly a speed run. So let's talk about this a little bit. These example directories have essentially like the boilerplate examples for each platform and library, right? So we have Win32, like DirectX 10, for example. This is using the Win32 API to actually like create the window and handle all the events. And then it uses DirectX 10 as the rendering API, as the graphics API. So GLFW, OpenGL2, for example, will use GLFW as the windowing and event library and all that. And then it'll use OpenGL, like version two compliant code to actually do all of the rendering. There's even mscript and stuff here, so you can run it on you know, the web. Uh, there's Metal, so you can run it. This will probably just be a Mac OS version, but they do have like iOS and Android example somewhere else. Here's an Android example, for example. <laughs> the point is there's a ton of stuff here. And then not only is there this, but they now have a backends folder. This used to be part of examples that contains the actual backend files for all of these. My point being that it's really easy to integrate this with literally anything. And that's the beauty of this. That's what makes this so amazingly cross-platform. The fact that they just have example implementations of everything and you don't have to do anything yourself, right? All you really have to do is open up this I'm GUI examples solution. Now I'm going to upgrade all of mine to like the latest because I'm using Visual Studio 2022 and I think this is still 2019. Let's go ahead and drag that into here. It's upgraded all the projects. Cool, that should be pretty straightforward. And then as I mentioned, we pick something. So as an example, I'm just gonna pick GLFW Vulcan, let's set that as a startup project. If we wanted to, to keep things clean, we could unload like literally all the other projects. And I mean, this is where like, if you were actually writing an application, like you were writing your own application using I'm GUI, maybe you wouldn't start with just, you know, modifying this example solution. If you wanna see a video on how to actually create a project from scratch using I'm GUI, let me know, I'll probably do that. But otherwise this is just gonna be faster. So you'll see basically five main files in this kind of example, GLFW Vulcan. Main is the entry point, as it implies. This is what has the actual like main function, if I can find it over here, right? There's our int main. It's got a bunch of GLFW boilerplate code. And see, this is where it's so amazing. This is why I love I'm GUI so much as well, because not only is it an amazing GUI, like library framework, whatever, it's also a fantastic kind of example of how to get up and running with all of these like APIs, like whether you're using GLFW for windowing or SDL or Win32, here's a beautiful example of how to set up GLFW, create a window, set up Vulkan for it, and then render UI to it, right? So if we just hit F5, this is gonna be a debug build, but it doesn't really matter for us. This is what we get, right? This is basically ready to go, <laughs> right? We have a beautiful application. And as I mentioned, because this is the docking branch, we can literally take this and just drag it out of the window. And you can see it's now its own window. This isn't possible in the main branch or in the master branch. This is why, again, as I mentioned, like this kind of functionality is great. I can drag it to my other monitor. I can treat it like it was a normal application, which is amazing. And then under examples, we've also got that dock space, right? Now it's a dock space. Now I can dock this in here and you can see suddenly we have a very like real looking application, but it's all running in I'm GUI. It's all rendering like, you know, well, in this case at VSync, I'm on a 144 Hertz monitor. Like it's all rendering like real time frame to frame. Every frame is, is rendered from scratch. You know, we have a good immediate mode UI ready to go. So how do we kind of convert this into our own application? Well, from here, you could literally set up anything you wanted to. Right, and there's even some useful comments being like, you know, if you if you want your own font, because that's a common request. I'm GUI's default font is a bit, you know, debug looks like a debug UI thing. 
Um, <laughs> you can change that easily, obviously. And then we have like, again, very well annotated the main loop here. So inside the main loop, we have some important IAM GUI commands that have to happen at the start of each frame. So IAM GUI, impl Vulkan new frame, glfw new frame, and then finally IAM GUI's new frame. Once you finish these three lines of code within that main loop, this stuff is basically rendering all of the UI that we just saw. So let's just say we're not interested in this, right? And then it goes all the way down to the actual rendering code. So that we also need to keep. So over here now is where my code goes here, right? So within this now, we could set up our own UI. So to demonstrate this in a little bit more of a kind of robust way, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm not sure where this will go exactly because I don't know where the directory is. It's okay, we'll just put it in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new item. And this is going to basically be like our application like UI stuff. So I'm going to create a new file just to keep it clean and simple so you guys know what I'm talking about. New file, new, new header file there, and a new CPP file. You know, uh, if I wanted to, well, let's just keep this simple, right? I don't want to be all overkill here. Let's just create like a namespace called my app. Um, and then we'll create a function called like, you know, render UI or something like that. Nice and simple. Let's go back to that C++ file. There's our render UI. And then over here, you know, as long as we include I am GUI, and I don't even know how this was including in that I am GUI. So let's go take a look. Okay, so like this, basically all we need, right? Over here now, I can like create a window. So I am GUI begin, and you know, let's just say this is going to be my like settings panel or something. I create that window. I am GUI end to end the window, and then we can like add a button. Hello. Let's add like a drag float so we can have like a static float value. We can have like some kind of thing that we drag around. This is just an example, obviously. Um, that's our settings panel done, render UI. So if we go back to main, let's just include that application window, or sorry, that application file that we just made, application.h, and then we just do my app render UI, F5. And we now have that settings panel I talked about, right? But what about the doc space? So you can see there is no doc space. This is actually Vulkan rendering a clear color in the background here, which again is, is another perfect example. You know, if you are in fact writing an application that revolves around graphics rendering, this is where it's great to use I'm GUI as well, because you you basically have all the Vulkan boilerplate stuff done. You can start rendering whatever graphics you like, as well as have UI stuff easily on top of that. Um, and that works really well, obviously. So how do, how do we set up that doc space? In fact, how do we do anything in I'm GUI? Well, I'm GUI has a fantastic file called I'm GUI demo.cpp, which is huge. It's like 8,000 lines. And it has examples for everything that you might want to do. So let's let's go ahead and simulate a scenario in which I don't know what to do. How do I create something? Well, the first thing is, let's go back to our app, right? I'm going to go ahead and just type in I am GUI show demo, show demo window, F5, right? So now we're not only going to get our settings window, we also get that demo window. Now within this demo window, you can just have a browse. So like basics, you know, here's like some stuff I might want. Oh, I want to make a tree. How do I make this whole tree thing, right? And because these all have strings, obviously, that are rendering, you can just search for these strings within the file. So for example, basic trees, let's go to that I'm GUI demo file and search for basic trees. Here it is, right? And we have, again, the actual code that was used to render this specific like tree. So again, as an example, we know that we have a doc space somewhere here, and it's gone, gone ahead and made it on the main window here. So let's just search for doc space. This is an example for docking and doc space, right? So show example app doc space. So again, I'm going to just literally copy like all of this. Now there's a menu bar here, and there's some stuff that we probably don't care about. But let's just copy the whole thing. Anyway, we'll go back to application. I'll put it at the at the beginning here. So then we'll just strip it. So what don't I want? So if, like, again, P open is not really a required parameter here, we can replace it with an on point because we don't want to close the thing, show docking disabled message, like we don't need that stuff. Sure, we'll keep the menu bar. Um, was this a menu item? Again, we can probably just strip some of this stuff we don't care about, like help marker. Um, well, this is the close option, I'm not going to have a close option done, right? And then I'll take my settings panel and put it within the doc space. Like that, we can get rid of the show demo window. And then suddenly, just like that, 
we have a doc space, we have this, and guess what? It's now dockable. So we can just dock it over here. Again, to uh, extend the example of a game engine, let's just say I have a viewport panel as well, right? So I'm gonna make another viewport window. Gonna go ahead and dock this uh, into here. There's my viewport, dock it into the center. And guess what? I basically already have like my game engine up and running. I just need to render my stuff in Vulkan or DirectX or whatever I'm using to a texture, to a frame buffer, and then just display that image inside this I'm GUI viewport as just an I'm GUI image, right? That is literally done. Uh, and then, of course, if you close this and then reopen it, it's going to save old layout and that gets saved inside an imgui.ini file. So it's basically like ready to go. It's such a simple thing. And, and because we've kind of segregated everything into this application, uh, you know, into these two application files, let's say that I don't want to use Vulkan anymore. I want to use DirectX 12 right? Because that's, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe I need to, or I want to, or whatever, I can go ahead and just like grab these two applications. Now, of course, this is not like the best architecture. Like you'd probably want like a static library or something with these things. But for now, I'm just going to copy application.h and .cpp into here, right? I'm going to set that as my startup project. We can like unload that Vulkan project entirely so it doesn't get in the way. And then again, I'm going to go into main. I'm going to include application.h and then I'm going to go into like the main function you know I'm going to find my well I'm GUI like render is kind of what I'm looking for there's my rendering code there's that example UI code and then we have the same pattern you know dx, DX12 new frame win32 new frame I'm GUI new frame so in between these two let's do my you know the my app render UI f5 now it's building the DirectX 12 example using the win32 API of course my ini file like didn't get carried across so I'll have to reset up the layout but you can see that's that's it like that's up and running but that's my DirectX 12 example and of course if we wanted to uh, customize that text a little bit we could just change the title to like my app or something and then now we have my app up and running with everything so really simple this was practically a speed run I apologize if I went very fast and as I mentioned this is not like you know the best architecture but this is just how you get up and running with I am GUI really easy and from here of course you can build literally any application you want it doesn't have to have any rendering Right, I don't want to. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Like, you don't have to render 3D graphics in this viewport. You can, but you don't have to. You could. This could be a calculator app, right? It doesn't matter. But the point is, uh, it's just really easy to get up and running. Works on every platform, any like device, really. Um, and yeah, I don't think I need to say anything else. But you know me, I will say something else. Uh, if you want to actually see where the app was like created to, and you want to distribute this for whatever reason, let's go back to like debug or. I'm just going to one of these things to see where the exe file was output to. Let me just make that a little bit wider so you can see. I like to use this output console sometimes to just quickly grab the path. So this is my exe file that we were debugging there. This is a debug build. You'll probably want to use a release build. But anyway, here is my like DirectX 12 example. Uh, let's actually do something cool though. I like that layout. So let's go ahead and grab that I am GUI INI file. And we'll pop it into this debug thing and overwrite this one just so that we retain our layout. And that's it, right? We now have our application. There's a lot of like debug symbols and stuff that we really don't need. Um, it all builds into a static library, right? So this little my app situation, my app, is now literally just this exe file and this ini file, right? If we grab that, put it into an isolated directory so it's clear what actually goes into this, rename this to like my app, we've made an application. We've made a C++ application that is like two megabytes. Again, this is a debug build, so I regret everything. It would be much smaller and much... Let's actually do that. Let's just build a... Let's make a release build. I just did a build all, which is not what I wanted to do. Let's just build this specifically. And again, it's just going to put it into um, the release directory. Here it is, 473 kilobytes. Let's go back to our My App and uh, we'll just delete that, replace that. Enter, there's our release build up and running. Done. Ship it. It's literally ready. Well, actually, we do get that console window, though, so maybe I'll take back my ready to ship thing. Let's go back into the release uh, configuration here into link a system, and we will just set this to be Windows instead. Uh, let's go ahead and rebuild that. Now, we will get a linking error over here because of WinMain. I Honestly, the, I'm, I feel like the Win32 example should definitely include that instead, but you basically have to... I don't remember the WinMain, like... 
function. But for a Windows application, you have to use uh, the win main entry point. So let's go ahead and quickly, we don't really need all of this fancy stuff, do we? F5, to just double check. Okay, now we get um, no console being allocated there, which is good. So if we go back to my app and uh, go ahead and go into release, copy that, you know, the drill, paste it in, my app, enter, no console, Ready to ship. I can't believe it's not butter. I mean, I can't believe that was that easy. If you want to see some more content around I'm GUI, definitely let me know. As I mentioned, I can go a little bit deeper into how to actually set this up from scratch, not using their examples, but you know, how you would set it up if you had like an existing library or game engine or something like that. Or if you want to see some more like styling stuff, so how to get it actually looking nice and how to get it to look more like Hazel or that stuff, let me know as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful to you. Hope this will help you out with your C++ application development. If you need a website or a web server, definitely check out hosting.com slash churno. The link will be in the description below. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.